Like fair, your farewell a, song. What are you going to sing? Well, we'd like to sing a medley of the tunes that are partially responsible for our enormous wealth. <laughs> <laughs> it is seriously difficult to find a sadder story in all of the music industry than the story of how the mamas and papas broke up. It's a tale that will bring a tear to even the hardest of hearts, and it's one that will certainly make you rethink everything you know about the band. While the Mamas and Papas Wikipedia page state that the band started around 1965, real followers of the band know that the band started when 25-year-old John Phillips saw Michelle Gillum. At the time, Michelle was just 16 years old, but John fell in love with her. John loved Michelle so much that he divorced his current wife, who had already born him two kids, and married Michelle. At the time, John was already part of a band called The Journeyman. Around the time he married Michelle, his band broke up and he was left with no band. That was when it occurred to John that it would be a smart decision to make sure his wife was in his next band. That way, he reasoned, they would make a lot more money. On paper, that sounded like a great idea, but as time would prove, it was probably the worst idea that John could have thought of at the time. In any case, John made the decision and Michelle went along with it. The only thing left to choose was a band name and find one more band member. Specifically, they needed a tenor singer. And that's where Denny Doherty, the third band member, came in. At the time, Denny had also just broken up with his band, The Mugwumps. He also had the perfect tenor voice that John needed and was just the perfect addition to their little band. After hearing him perform, John spoke to him and immediately got him on board. Now, the band members were John, Michelle, and Denny. The Mamas and Papas would eventually be a band of four members, so there was one more person who needed to join the band to make it complete. At this time, the band was called the New Journeymen, and they started performing together. However, wherever they went, Denny was always on the phone talking to a mysterious woman named Cass Elliott. Cass was a former member of the Mugwumps, and she was absolutely in love with Denny. Interestingly, Denny didn't feel the same for Cass. However, he tolerated her and even indulged her affections. In any case, John and Michelle got very interested in Cass and wanted to meet her. And they eventually did. The day they did get to meet her, they had all tried LSD for the first time. So Cass joined them and all of them had a massive acid trip. That was a profound bonding experience, but it certainly didn't mean that Cass could join the band. In fact, at this point, the new journeymen were not looking for any members. Cass started hanging out a lot with the band and they did all manner of things together. After a while, John said the band had to go on a vacation for creative purposes. To make the vacation as creative as possible, they chose their vacation location by blindfolding Michelle and asking her to throw a dart at a club. Luckily, the dart hit the Virgin Islands, which was a stroke of luck. Imagine, for example, that the dart hit somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, or even somewhere in Wyoming. No offense to Wyoming, but we seriously couldn't think of a worse place to holiday in. Anyway, the band went to the Virgin Islands for their vacation. Remember that at this period, they had not written a hit song, had no contract on the table, and didn't even have an album. All they had were practice sessions and gigs in small bars around the country. After a few days in the Virgin Islands enjoying their vacation, Cass came over to join them. The main reason she came over was to confess her love to Denny, which went really bad. At the time Cass was falling in love with Denny, Michelle and Denny were sort of falling for each other. And yes, this is regardless of the fact that Michelle was already married to John. When Cass came to the Virgin Islands, she saw that Denny and Michelle were flirting really hard and this annoyed her endlessly. Let's cut to the chase. This dynamic is specifically the reason why the band eventually broke up, but this video would not be complete without the how of the breakup. So let's get to it, shall we? After their vacation, the band and Cass returned to the United States. While at the Virgin Islands, Cass had managed to maneuver herself into joining the band officially, despite strong misgivings by John. Those misgivings, of course, was a tad too late. She had Denny on her side, and Michelle was on whatever side Denny was on. When they got back to New York, they met up with a guy named Barry McGuire. Barry was Cass's roommate, and he had a hot new single on the charts. When he heard the band sing, he asked him to speak to Lou Adler, a hot new producer. When Lou heard the band, he was gobsmacked and immediately offered them a record deal. At this point, the band still didn't have a proper name. Once Cass saw the contracts Lou was offering, she signed them right away. Cass was also the one who came up with the name The Mamas and Papas. What inspired the name? Well, she heard one of the Hells Angels talking on TV about how they call their women the Mamas. She said she agreed with them that Mamas was a good name for women. She also said that Papas was a great name for men. 
That was how the band was named The Mamas and The Papas. After that, they recorded their first official single, which was California Dreaming. It quickly became a top 10 hit in no time. They also recorded their album during that same time, and it was a huge commercial hit. It was a magical time for the band. A few weeks before, they were an unknown group of ragtag musicians, and almost overnight, they had become popular and wealthier than they could ever hope to be. They quickly bought a huge house in Hollywood and moved to it. Now, there are very few times where you can genuinely say buying a house in Hollywood and moving in was an awful idea, but this time was sadly one of those times. Before long, their house became a den of parties, drugs, and just general debauchery. On the other hand, as they grew more famous, their friendship began to deteriorate. Michelle and Denny continued to flirt even harder, which annoyed both John and Cass endlessly. Then one day, it finally happened. After a night of drinking and partying, Michelle and Denny had sex while John and Cass were passed out. This was the beginning of the end for the band. After the incident, Cass went to live on her own, and so did Michelle. John and Denny then became housemates, which was kind of a way to keep the other from spending time with Michelle. At this point, it was clear that the band had serious problems, but they still managed to record a second studio album. How they managed to do that in such horrid relational conditions is something we'll never understand. But they did it, and the album was successful too. At this point, each band member was dealing with their own problems. Cass, for one, was distancing herself from the group and was hanging with people who did not want the best for her. John was getting lost in a maze of drug use, and Denny was putting in a lot of effort to acquire an acute drinking problem. Lastly, Michelle was hopping from man to man, which, as you might expect, drove Denny and John to more liquor and drug problems, respectively. It got to a point where John said that he couldn't perform or practice with Michelle any longer. He, along with Denny and Cass, eventually forced her out of the band, but she returned after just six months. At this point, Cass gave birth to a baby girl and named her Owen Vanessa. She never revealed who the father was, but she was pretty clear that the band no longer served her interests. She said she now had a child to care for, and simply couldn't be bothered with dealing with the intrigues of Michelle's love triangle with Denny, John, and probably dozen other men outside the band. After Cass left the band, Denny and John tried to go solo, but found no real success. Cass was the only one who found limited success in her solo careers as an actress, singer, and even television presenter. Sadly, that success, like Cass, was short-lived. She died of a heart attack a night after playing for two weeks at the London Palladium. In August 1974, Michelle, Denny, and John came together as a band to bury one of their own. It was the final end of the Mamas and Papas and guaranteed that the band would never be whole again. Afterward, Denny abandoned his drinking problem and John gave up bad drugs for good. Michelle also found happiness and managed to have a long and rather successful acting career. Sadly, only Cass, or Mama Cass as she was called, did not have a happy ending.